Lubinsky, Kubinsky, Lominsky, Rosansky, and Poznansky. We're in Warsaw, the capital of Poland. It's August 1939. Europe is still at peace. At the moment, life in Warsaw is going on as normally as ever. But suddenly something seems to have happened. Are those Poles seeing a ghost? Why does this car suddenly stop? Everybody seems to be staring in one direction. People seem to be frightened, even terrified, some flabbergasted. Can it be true? It must be true, no doubt. The man with the little mustache, Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler in Warsaw, when the two countries are still at peace and all by himself? He seems strangely unconcerned by all the excitement he's causing. Is he by any chance interested in Mr. Maslovsky's delicatessen? That's impossible. He's a vegetarian. And yet, he doesn't always stick to his diet. Sometimes he swallows whole countries. Does he want to eat up Poland, too? Anyhow, how did he get here? What happened? Well, it all started in the general headquarters of the Gestapo in Berlin. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Colonel, we have Wilhelm Kutze here, if you'd like to look into his record. I hope he'll talk. He'd better. Send him in. Yes, sir. Wilhelm Kutze! Wilhelm Kutze! Wilhelm Kutze! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler. <laughs> and now, Wilhelm. I understand you want a little tank to play with, huh? Yes, my father promised me one if I got a good report card. But our Fuhrer heard about your report card and decided to give you just what you want. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! <laughs> you, uh, you are going to tell your father who gave it to you, aren't you, Wilhelm? Sure, our Fuhrer. And then uh, maybe he will like the Fuhrer a little better, won't he? Sure. He, uh... He doesn't like him now, does he, Wilhelm? No, he doesn't. And uh, sometimes he even says funny things about him, doesn't he? Well, he said they named a brandy after Napoleon, and they made a herring out of Bismarck, and Hitler's going to end up as... A piece of cheese. Yes. Yes. How did you know? Well, it's a, it's a natural thought. Oh. A natural thought? Well, I, I hope you don't misunderstand. I, I always... Well, that is... You see, we, 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 you see Colonel... I hope you don't doubt my... Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Der Führer! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil myself. That's not in the script. But, Mr. Dobosh, please. That's not in the script, Mr. Brunsky. But it'll get a laugh. But I don't want a laugh here. How many times have I told you not to add any line? I want... You want my opinion, Mr. Dobosh? No, Mr. Greenberg, I do not want your opinion. All right, then let me give you my reaction. A laugh is nothing to be sneezed at. Mr. Greenberg, I hired you as an actor and not as a writer, understand? No. What does the script say? I make an entrance. And what do you say? Nothing. Then say nothing. But look, let's get going with no, the rehearsal. I, I have to play Hamlet tonight. Here am I sitting, waiting for my scene, all eager to go, and I have to wait and wait to be driven out of my mood just because two little actors in the cast want to enlarge their parts. Mr. Ravitch, what you are, I wouldn't eat. How dare you call me a ham? Folks, I want everybody to understand this. This is a serious play, a realistic drama. Good morning, Dervash. Good morning. How do you like my dress? Very good, very good. It is a document of Nazi Germany. Is that what you're going to wear in the concentration camp? Well, don't you think it's pretty? That's just it. Well, why not? I think it's a tremendous contrast. Think of me being flogged in the darkness. I scream, suddenly the lights go on, and the audience discovers me on the floor in this gorgeous dress. That's a terrific laugh. That's right, Greenberg. You keep out of this. That a great star, an artist, could be so inartistic. You must be out of your mind. What do you mean by talking to my wife like that? How dare you? Well, I'm sorry. I lost my temper. Sweetheart, the dress stinks. You're only afraid I'm running away with the scene. I afraid? Why should I be? No, of course not. You're the greatest actor in the world. Everybody knows that, including you. Don't be a prima donna. Whenever there's a chance to take the spotlight away from me, it's becoming ridiculous the way you grab attention. Whenever I start to tell a story, you finish it. If I go on a diet, you lose the weight. If I have a cold, you cough. And if we should ever have a baby, I'm not so sure I'd be the mother. I'm satisfied to be the father. But, Mr. Dobosh, look, if you'll just give me a chance, I... Uh, who made you up? I did, Mr. Dobosh. What's wrong with it? I don't know. It's not convincing. 
to me he's just a man with a little mustache. But so is Hitler. <laughs> no, 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 it, it, it's not just the mustache. It's something, I don't know. Well, I just can't smell Hitler in him. I can. I know, I know. That picture, that's what he should look like. But that picture was taken of me. And the picture's wrong, too. Oh! Now, now, see here, Mr. Dobosh. I'm a nobody, and I have to take a lot. But I know I look like Hitler, and I'm going to prove it right now. I'm going out on the street and see what happens. And that's how Adolf Hitler came to Warsaw in August 1939. May I have your autograph, Mr. Bronski? Bronski? Oh, certainly. I, uh, oh, that's the answer. 